We were having some problems with our old garage door opener, so we decided to go ahead and replace it with a new one. We ended up going with this model from Chamberlain, and in this video, I'm gonna show you why we chose this model specifically, what we had to do to uninstall the old garage door opener, and then what you would need to do to install this one in your house. One of the reasons we went with this model is because it has the MyQ system built in. Now we love the MyQ system. We use that all the time to make sure our garage door is closed and also to open it from our phones if we need to. But the problem with it is since it's a separate installation, it requires a battery operated sensor to be attached to the garage door itself. Now this isn't necessarily a problem, but we have had some issues where it's malfunction. And if the battery runs out, you can't open your garage door remotely or check on it remotely whatsoever. So we wanted an opener with the MyQ system built into it. As far as what's included, it's typically all of your normal stuff that you'd expect to see in a garage door opener kit. And we'll cover more of what's included as we go through the installation process. To remove the old garage door, the first thing you want to do is release the door using the emergency release cord. Next, you'll want to disconnect the opener from power. Now, if this is just plugged in, just unplug it, but some of these are hardwired, so you'll have to shut it off at the breaker. Next, you'll want to disconnect the wires for the door controller as well as the wires for the safety reversing sensors. Use a screwdriver to release the wires and then pull the wires out at the same time. And if your wires aren't clearly marked, it's a good idea to mark them with either a Sharpie or a piece of electrical tape so you remember which wires go to the controller and which wires go to the safety sensors. You'll also want to make sure these wires are routed to a location where it's not going to interfere when you remove the garage door opener from the bolts. If you don't do this and something catches on the way down, you're not going to be very happy. Next, you'll want to loosen the bolts that are holding the garage door opener to the mounts, but be careful not to loosen these all the way until you're absolutely ready to support the weight of the garage door opener. Remove the bolts the rest of the way by hand and then lower the garage door opener onto some support like the top of a ladder. Make sure you disconnect the arm from the garage door trolley before you lower the garage door opener the rest of the way. When lowering the garage door opener the rest of the way, you may need to set the opener on something else until you can disconnect it completely. In our case, the arm still hit the springs when we tried to lower the garage door opener down all the way to the floor. Next, you'll disconnect the pin that's holding the other end of the track. Once this is disconnected, you should be able to remove the garage door opener completely. Depending on what model you're coming from and what model you're going to, you may need to swap out some additional parts like sensors or garage door openers. This is going to vary depending on your specific situation and if there's anything else that you'd like to upgrade, even if you might not have to. I also want to point out here that most garage door openers now that you can pick up either in a big box store or online, they're designed for a seven foot garage door. So that means if you have a modern garage door that's eight feet, then you'll need to purchase either one that's designed specifically for an eight foot door, or more typically you'll find ones that are designed to have an extension added onto the end. So these extensions will have an additional rail that will accommodate that eight foot door length, as well as either a belt or a chain, uh, a belt in our case, that is going to be the appropriate length that you'll need to install for an eight foot garage door. This is the piece that comes with it, and this is the piece that's included in the kit. So you can see here, it's this section and then, then some in order to accommodate that eight foot door. So you don't need this piece that's included in the box, you just need to use the one that's in the kit. So with these, they just line up with each other. And you just have to stick these in. Then what we have to do is push these together. If any of these sections are hard to push on all the way, you can always use a rubber hammer or rubber mallet in order to make sure the connections are tight. You'll want to add a screwdriver to the rail per the instructions because this is what's going to keep the trolley in place as you're connecting the belt to the garage door opener. Next, you'll want to unscrew the two top bolts in the garage door opener so you can install the bracket. I found it's easiest to install the U bracket first into the rail before attaching it to the top of the garage door opener. Install the cover protection bolt into the bolt hole and then install the bolts on top of the garage door opener to attach the rail to the opener itself. We want to make sure these bolts are tight, but we don't want to over tighten it. So snug them down, but don't make them too tight. This is where we take that longer belt that we purchased and we put this through this hole. We want to make sure that the, the uh, teeth are on the inside, facing the inside, and then that this hook is facing this direction here, okay? So get that there. And then you want to take your pulley, I'll unwrap this here. And the reason why it's taped up is because there's grease on the inside. So we want to put, take this pulley and put this on the inside here. And then we want to take this bolt 
I'm gonna stick it through the pulley. I'm gonna put the washer underneath. And then we wanna take this nut, put it down here too, tighten this up. And you can't get this cable through without this pulley being out of the way. So make sure you feed this through this hole here first before you put this pulley on, because otherwise you can't get this metal bracket through this hole. Because this, this trolley needs to be able to move freely. And it is. Okay, then next we wanna take a flat blade screwdriver and then we wanna pry up this tab. Let's make it a little bit better. All right. Connect the hook end of the belt to the trolley. Then you'll need to install this threaded shaft with spring nut to the other end of the belt using the master link that's included. All right, so we're gonna take these parts. I'm gonna put this chain link in here. We're gonna do the same for this bolt. And then we're going to put this piece on top. And then we're gonna put this clip on in order to get this to stay in place. We need to unscrew this. You'll need to pull the belt as tight as you can and then wrap it around the sprocket on top of the garage door opener. This will give you enough tension to be able to make your final connection on the trolley with the spring-loaded nut. All right, so we gotta get it finger tight here. Don't use tools. Now I can remove the screwdriver that was holding the trolley in place. Then you'll wanna insert a screwdriver into the nut ring slot and then tighten the spring trolley nut with an adjustable wrench. Complete the belt installation by installing the sprocket cover on top of the motor assembly. Okay. You may need to change out the bracket that's on the other end of the rail, depending on what model you're coming from and what model you're going to. Just make sure that if the brackets are different to swap this out for the correct one for your garage door opener. Now at this point to complete the installation, you just have to reverse the steps that you took to remove the old garage door opener. So be sure you have everything in place to fully support the garage door opener as you're lifting it up and making sure that you have help here if you need it while you're putting everything back in place and bolting this together. I also wanna point out that your installation process could vary a little depending on your specific environment. So make sure you read all of the instructions that are included in the manual to make sure everything is installed properly. If you're installing the new sensors and wires, now's the time to do that. Otherwise, go ahead and reconnect the existing sensor and control wires to the new opener. Before attaching the garage door to the trolley, make sure you reinstall the emergency release cord first. Again, this process will be similar to the uninstallation step, but you may need to readjust the bracket itself because of a change in design or positioning. If you wanna change the hardwire door control, there's usually a screw installed behind the button. Once the top screw is removed, you should be able to lift it off of the wall, remove the wires, and swap it out for the new controller. Now, finally, we can plug it in and start doing our programming and testing to make sure everything is set up properly. To program the travel, press and hold the adjustment button until the up button begins to flash or a beep is heard. Press and hold the up button until the door is in the desired up position. And then once the door is in the desired up position, press and release the adjustment button again. The garage door opener lights will flash twice and the down button will begin to flash. Then press and hold the down button until the door is in the desired down position. Once the door is in the desired down position, press and release the adjustment button. The garage door opener lights should flash twice if it's successful, and then the program travel is complete. Once both the up and down positions have been manually set, the opener will enter a force sensing operation by automatically moving the door open and close. The garage door opener will sound an audible and visual alert before automatically opening and closing the door, and the opener will be three times confirming that the automatic force setup completed successfully. At this point, you'll wanna make sure to follow all the rest of the instructions on getting everything set up and finalized for your garage door opener, including testing all the different safety protocols. Another nice thing about this model is you have the ability to program new remote controls directly from the control pad versus having to climb up on a ladder and push a button in order to program or reprogram a remote. The setup process for MyQ on the app is pretty straightforward as well. Just make sure you have a strong Wi-Fi signal in your garage where the garage door opener is. Otherwise, you won't be able to communicate with the garage door opener from your phone. 
You may have to have a ladder handy for this process too, so be sure not to put that away just yet. And yes, this garage door opener is Amazon Key compatible. Using the MyQ app is a really straightforward process. Now, I will say that closing the garage door does take a little bit of time because there's a series of light flashes and beeps that have to occur in order to warn anyone who might be in the garage locally that the garage door is about to close. This makes a lot of sense because if you're actually in the garage or near the garage, you don't want to get caught off guard with this. Opening the garage door is a much faster process. We decided to change the keypad on the exterior of our garage as well because the other one was a little bit sun bleached and we just wanted a new look on the garage. The process is really straightforward. You just need to remove a screw like we did with the other controller and then slide this one off. To reinstall, just reverse the process. Just make sure you reprogram this controller to work with the new garage door opener before you install it physically on the side of your house. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.